This is a basic tutorial on geometry nodes through making this. I think it's easy to learn the unknown through a concrete example. Let's begin. With the original cube, I create a new geometry nodes. First I will create small spheres at the vertices. You need instance on points to do this. I need to create a sphere to replace the vertices. I'll drag the sphere in. You can shrink its size here. But there is another way. You don't need to create a sphere, just add a sphere node. It will be more convenient because you can adjust like this. Now I use set shade smooth to make it more smooth. Finished the sphere. Now I make the lines connecting the spheres together. The idea is to convert the mesh to a curve, then convert the curve to a mesh and the faces will disappear. Then use curve circle to create a cylinder for the mesh. Continue to adjust the resolution and size accordingly. I want to show both the sphere and the links, so I will use join geometry. I move set shade smooth out so that both parts are smooth. To move the note without affecting the link, Hold down the ALT key and drag the note away. Now the pretty interesting part. I want to put some parameters like radius of sphere and radius of cylinder out as input to modifier for easy editing. You can rename these parameters in the group tab. Now I will add materials. First you create a material. Then you set material to attach that material to the object. You can assign the material to each part separately, or put it after join geometry to assign it to the entire object. Press Ctrl X to delete the node without affecting the link. I named it Geo1 for reuse. Now I don't need the cube anymore. I will create a plane and add the geometry I just created. Subdivide the mesh. Adjust the radii to get the desired size. I use Displace modifier to make it bumpy. Displace must be on geometry. I wanted this bump to move so I converted coordinates to object. Create an object. Add it to the object and make it move over time.
Right-click on the timeline to set the interpolation mode to linear so that the bumpy motion happens evenly over time. Now I will adjust the camera. Adjustment makes the mesh skewed. I added an environment to get the light. Gives a little more light. Now I create a radial gradient background. Create a plane and rotate it to be perpendicular to the direction of the camera view. Move away so that it doesn't cover our object. Go to the shader editor to create a radial gradient. If you have enabled Node Wrangler, just press Ctrl T to add two new nodes, otherwise you will have to add them manually. Adjust the scale and position to make it beautiful. Add color ramp to change color. Maximize roughness and metallic so that the color is not affected by the angle of light. Now it's time to create the depth of field. I need one more perspective to make it easier to manipulate. Select the camera and enable depth of field. Go to viewport display, select show limits so that focus distance is displayed on the viewport. Adjust the focus distance to touch the near edge of the plane. We're going to make the spheres close by clearly visible, the spheres in the back row blurred. F-stop is the distance from the visible area to the invisible area. Enable Bloom in Render Properties. These bright spots are due to Bloom. We're done. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel, like videos and leave comments are great gifts for me. See you in the next videos.